How would you do it? Should I let you think about it for a while? It's a good question. This hierarchy, you know, zero stacks, one stack, two stacks. Is there any hierarchy with queues? Maybe when you throw one queue on, you're already up at the Turing machine stage. Maybe it's one, two, three queues. I mean, how do they relate? Are queues more powerful than stacks or less powerful? Things to think about. I'll let you think about that. We'll move on with some simpler stuff. It's a very good question. Take it off the exam, though. I, yeah. <laughs> I need, um, no, it's not on the exam. Uh, how come nobody's asking just like nice, straightforward questions? Jeez. All these really, I mean, excellent questions. Really excellent. You're thinking just like, uh, just like you should be. Okay. We just did even palindromes. Now we're going to do this. We're going to do the complement of even palindromes, things that are not even palindromes. Now, I need to remind you of something very important. Context-free languages are not closed under complement. Just because we had a way of getting even length palindromes does not mean there is any way to get the complement. You can't just toggle the final and non-final states like we used to. And I want to think about that and go slow with that for a minute. Why can't you just toggle the non-final and final states for these non-deterministic pushdown machines? Why can't you just reverse everything? I mean, wherever you used to end up and accept, now you reject. And wherever you used to end up and reject, now you accept. I'll give you a hint. If it was a deterministic machine, you could do that. Deterministic machines are closed under complement. Deterministic context-free languages are closed under complement. Let me tell you what that means. If you take the complement of a deterministic context-free language, you get another deterministic context-free language. It stays there. If you take the complement of a non-deterministic context-free language, you don't necessarily get one. It goes out possibly into a higher level. So you can do the final toggling trick for deterministic context-free language. It's the same trick we did for finite state machines. No more complicated. Why doesn't the trick work for non-determinism? Because it didn't work for non-determinism for finite state machines either. If you toggle states in a non-deterministic finite state machine, you don't get the complement language. You end up accepting all the places that you had a chance to reject before. And the states that you had a chance to reject are not the complement. The complement should be all the ones that always get rejected. Non-determinism doesn't complement easily. So you can't just do tricks with non-determinism by toggling states. So there's no obvious way to show that non-deterministic context of your languages would be closed, and in fact, they're not. Nevertheless, in this case, we can still get the complement. Doesn't mean we're definitely stuck. This means we're not automatically in the ballpark. Before I go on and work on this, context-free languages are closed under, under what operation? Not complement, but under what easy operation? Under union. Because if you have a context-free language, you can do it as a grammar and take your start symbol and point it to the two start symbols of your grammar, and that's the union of the two. You can do the same thing with machines by doing the epsilon trick at the beginning. You know, just here's the two machines. You had another machine with a new start state. Epsilon, ZZ, go to each of the machines. That's deterministic even with the epsilon? No. no. Deterministic <laughs> machines are not closed under union. Context-free languages are, CFLs are the same as non-deterministic pushdown machines. Right. This means non-deterministic. This means deterministic. These are closed under union. These are closed under complement. These are not closed under union just because of what Chris said. Because the way you would normally do it is by making these E moves. And that's non-deterministic. You have a choice this way or that way. There's no way to get a general union of two deterministic context-free languages together. And in fact, here's a classic language that you can prove requires a non-deterministic pushdown machine. 
It's this deterministic one, unions with this deterministic one. These two together require a non-deterministic machine. There's no way to do it with a deterministic machine. And that's a counterexample to the hypothesis that they might be closed under union. They're not. Everyone knows how to do this with a deterministic machine? Anybody know how to do this with a deterministic machine? You push the zeros on, and then when you read the ones, instead of popping every time you read a one, the first one you read, you just move to another state that says, I saw one. And the next one you read, you pop. Then you go back. So you have a little double loop reading pairs of ones before you pop. It's not too bad. Twice. You can, but then, you well, can push it twice. you could push it twice and then just pop once on the other side. Is that what you mean? You want twice as many ones as zeros. So either you're going to read two ones to match each thing on the stack, or you're going to push twice as many on the way in and then just pop one at one at a time. I don't want to get into the details of that. That is a homework question. But to do both of these requires non-determinism. You can't mix them together deterministically. So keep that in mind. Neither one of these is closed under intersection, because intersection would require two out of the three operations of union, complement, and intersection. Two out of the three. <laughs> you'd require, if you were closed under complement and union, then you'd be closed under intersection. And neither one of these is closed under both complement and union. Uh, I can pass out a table I, for you. I actually, from when I took this before, you have a big table? It's the entire class on a sheet of paper. Ooh, we like that. Yeah, you won't want to see it to the end. Because <laughs> you don't understand. Okay, yeah. I, I can make a, I, I can Xerox a, a copy of all these closure properties and, and what's there and what's not. Uh, this is actually kind of, a, it, this is kind of a, a, a slick, trick to know this though because there is a trick when we talk about undecidability later where you go ahead and you take two context free languages and you and you union them and then that's definitely context free and then you take their complement which ends up turning into deterministic context free languages and well uh, I'm really off I'll do it later I want to get back to the, my mainstream here I, I went off on a tangent and a double tangent let's get back to the mainstream the complement of even length palindromes. I want to hear some ideas. How can we make a plan for a pushdown machine that's going to get this? Everything that's not of this form. We can start by intersecting something with odd length strings because we know that it. You mean odd length strings are definitely in this complement? All right, so let's start there. So the first thing Doug mentions is that these are even length palindromes. We want the complement of that. So anything that's odd length is in the complement. OK? How do you do something to accept odd length things? Anything odd, even, anything, except. Make a finite state machine. Right, And we'll divide all the things in this complement into the odd length strings and the even length strings. The odd length strings, I'll accept E, Z, Z. If it's odd length, I'll go this way. And if it's even length, I'll go here. Okay, so I agree that, that Doug's right. We can divide this up into the ones that are odd length and the ones that aren't odd length. The ones that are odd length, we definitely want to accept, and we'll do that with a finite state machine. You'll notice that a finite state machine is really also a pushdown machine. It just doesn't touch its stack. Just leave the stack alone the whole time. I wrote any here, so it's any, 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 any. Just don't touch the stack. Leave it alone and accept all the things that end up in the odd state. Or if it's not odd, if we don't make this non-deterministic choice and, and know that it's odd, if it's even, if we go this way, then what do we have to make sure? It's not the same machine, except when you get to a point where the stack doesn't match, you go to a state where you always, an accept state you always stay in that has all the arrows. That's one way to do it. Let's try to do it that way. So, so my, Michael's idea is to work on what he already knows from the last machine. And the last machine, we were working with matches, right? And hoping that we guess the right halfway point. 
We'll do the same thing.